In this video, we're going to be discussing the three muscles of the anterior leg compartment. Those are tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, and extensor hallucis longus. So I have a personal list of three big critical muscles. These are three muscles that are the most neglected by people that are just going to the gym for general strengthening and fitness. And we often don't strengthen these until we're in a clinical setting because we're injured or we have some neurological condition and trying to preserve the function of these muscles, but they're still very important. Those are the paraspinals, the hip flexors, and this one, the tibialis anterior. So that's what we're going to talk about first. This is such an important muscle. The origin of the tibialis anterior is the lateral surface of the tibia, and then it also has an attachment on the interosseous membrane, which recall is that syndesmosis, that fibrous connective tissue between the tibia and the fibula. You can't see it here in this image. One really good way to teach people to find this muscle is to find that bony projection that goes down the anterior surface of the tibia. That's the anterior crest. So you have people find that, and then you go just outside of that, or just lateral to that, and that's the muscle belly of tibialis anterior. As you go down the lower leg, about halfway down, the muscles start to converge into a tendon. The tendon crosses medially over the anterior surface of the tibia, and then it inserts on the medial cuneiform bone, and also the base of the first metatarsal. Now there's two actions of tibialis anterior. The first and most important is ankle dorsiflexion, but it also performs some subtalar inversion. Subtalar inversion is performed by a number of muscles, uh, the plantar flexors, including the gastrocnemius and the soleus, and also the tibialis posterior, along with the tibialis anterior, all share in this function. But dorsiflexion is the one you really want to know. Now, while there's others, I have here four very important clinical or functional implications of having a strong tibialis anterior. The first two are with normal gait. And a strong tibialis anterior is necessary for maintaining a neutral ankle during lower extremity swing. So when you're walking and you're swinging one leg through, that tibialis anterior has to fire to prevent the ankle from going into excessive plantar flexion. That's what gravity tends to make the ankle do. If you have a weak tibialis anterior, the ankle goes into plantar flexion and your toes drag as you swing the foot through. That can lead to a fall and can be disastrous in the geriatric population. Tibialis anterior is also required for eccentric control of plantar flexion during loading response. So at heel strike, so initial contact, the heel is in contact with the ground. But very quickly you go into loading response where the ankle rolls into plantar flexion to allow the plantar surface of the foot to have contact with the ground. This is part of weight acceptance during gait. But that plantar flexion is controlled and it's controlled eccentrically by the tibialis anterior. If this muscle is weak, you end up presenting with a foot slap during loading response. Also during a normal sit to stand at the very beginning before you ever stand up, the tibialis anterior is required for positioning of the feet for proper leverage. This occurs at the beginning of the first phase, which is the flexion momentum phase. And then also for balance, so static standing balance. Tibialis anterior is required to perform an ankle strategy resulting from a posterior directed perturbation. We cover these balance strategies in a separate video, so make sure to search for that on my channel. Tibialis anterior is innervated by the deep fibular nerve, as are all other muscles here in the anterior leg compartment. What you should notice, though, is that the nerve roots that contribute here are L4 and L5, but when we get to the other two muscles, they're going to actually receive contributions more from L5 and S1. Tibialis anterior gets its blood supply from two major arteries. Those are the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. There's branches such as the anterior and medial muscular branches, the anterior tibial recurrent artery, dorsalis pedis artery, anterior medial malleolar artery, etc. Those are all branches of the anterior tibial artery. And then the medial malleolar artery and calcaneal arteries are branches of the posterior tibial artery. As you might imagine, the antagonist to the tibialis anterior would be the triceps psoriae muscle group, which we call is composed of the gastrocnemius and soleus, those are the plantar flexors. Now, clinically speaking, I have never seen a need to stretch the tibialis anterior. 
if any muscle is going to become tight or contracted, it's going to be the gastrocnemius and the soleus. And so the ankle joint or tail curl joint is going to be contracted in a plantar flex position, probably because that's the open pack position of the joint. And generally speaking, if there's spasticity in a neurological condition, it's going to be gastroc soleus spasticity, not tibialis anterior. So there's seldom ever a need to stretch this muscle. That being said, what there is a need to do is strengthen this muscle. So before we get into these other two muscles here, I want to show you some really good strengthening exercises for the tibialis anterior. This is probably the most commonly given resisted dorsiflexion exercise. It's really just open chain dorsiflexion against TheraBand resistance. Now it seems pretty intuitive, but I want to go over a couple of very important points. Number one is the relative position of the TheraBand. You notice the TheraBand here is looped around the foot, and the other side of it is looped around something that is away from my body. And the resistance I feel when I'm performing dorsiflexion. But some patients think that they can just reverse this and they can hold the TheraBand up here and then loop the TheraBand on the bottom of their foot and then push on it like a gas pedal. And you need to make sure they understand that that works a different set of muscles. That's of course the triceps surrey on the back of the calf. We're specifically working the tibialis anterior, so you need to have the TheraBand looped around the top of the foot, the foot dorsum, and then additionally looped around something further away from your body. And the tension you feel should be when you're performing dorsiflexion. Okay, that's one very important point. The second point is to do this exercise with control. This is not an exercise where you're just repping it out as quickly as you can. You really want to focus on really engaging that tibialis anterior, and you can even palpate it while you're performing the exercise. You should feel the muscle flare out a little bit. Okay? And so what I often encourage people to do is to do it slowly and with holds at the top. So when I dorsiflex to end range, I'm not just letting it go, I'm holding it there for a couple of seconds. And then when I release it back down, I'm not just dropping my foot, I'm controlling it down. So make sure you understand that about this exercise. If you want to strengthen both tibialis anteriors, another good way to do that is with stool scoots, and you can use a rolling stool or a rolling chair. Rolling chair is going to be heavier, so it's going to give more resistance, but it also gives more stability for the patient if they're at risk of falling to either side or backwards. This is one pattern you can do it with, alternating lower extremities. So it pretty much just follows a typical walking pattern, one leg at a time. You'll notice that when I strike the ground with each foot, I'm getting heel strike, but I'm attempting to maintain dorsiflexion the whole time. Okay, so I'm engaging the tibialis anteriors throughout the entire movement. Again, you don't want to do this for speed. I'd much rather do it for control and really focus on engaging that tibialis anterior with each stride. So quality over speed with this. So this is the pattern with alternating lower extremities. The second pattern you can do is by pulling with both legs simultaneously. Again, we're focusing on control here of the movement and engaging dorsiflexion and tibialis anterior contraction throughout the duration of the movement. Now, the alternating pattern is actually easier, and the reason it's easier is because it actually allows you to go in a more reciprocal pattern, which we're more used to, and build up speed. This one is going to be slower, assuming you're not rocking back and forth, which you shouldn't do. And so because you can't build up speed, this one's more difficult and really causes you to focus on engaging those muscles. Now, if you say, well, aren't I also working hamstrings a little bit here? Yes. You can't do this movement without working the hamstrings because you'll notice as you pull your serve forward, you're going into knee flexion. Okay? But that's not the point. We're still working tibialis anterior with this movement, despite the fact that we're also getting hamstring contribution. The third exercise is heel walking. And I think you're starting to see a pattern here. Our focus is maintaining dorsiflexion and tibialis anterior contraction through the duration of the movement. That being said, quality here is important. We're going for form, not for speed. If you go too fast, it's going to be very difficult to maintain tibialis anterior contraction. Also, if your step length is too long, it will also be difficult. So I would actually encourage when you start out, 
to intentionally take shorter steps. And that will make it easier to maintain that dorsiflexion. We also want to focus on safety with this exercise because it's not a normal gait pattern, so people won't be used to it, and then they're going to be at risk at losing their balance, especially backwards with this exercise. And so to circumvent that, we can do a number of things. One, in the clinic, we can use a gait belt for safety. That means we'll have manual contact on the patient, even if it's just contact guard, and we can prevent loss of balance that way. You can also put them in a harness, and that helps to reduce the balance consideration. And so, again, for safety, but it also allows them to entirely focus on using those muscles, the tibialis anteriors. Um, at home, they can hold on to the back of a sofa if it's available. They can use a countertop. In the clinic, you can have them hold on to the parallel bars. There's a number of things you can do to reduce the risk of loss of balance. But again, the key here is focus on the form and engaging those muscles. Now, the last exercise here I call downward heel drives. This is one of my favorite exercises to give in a neuro clinic for patients with foot drop or just generally tibialis anterior weakness. And by weakness, I mean something in the three range on a manual muscle test. So three minus out of five, three out of five, or even three plus out of five. Once they get to a four out of five, they could still do this for sure, but then they can also do the first three that we talked about. But if you have somebody with a three minus out of five anterior tib strength, they are not gonna be able to do open chain TheraBand resisted dorsiflexion. It's just not gonna happen. And even with a three, it's still gonna be a little bit difficult, okay? So you wanna do something that's gonna be easier, but also really strengthens the muscle. And so that's where this one comes in. Now the setup for the downward heel drive is very important. You're gonna be in seated. You can certainly use hand support like I have right here. And you want your legs to be in a position where when every single muscle is completely relaxed, that your forefoot or toes are comfortably resting on the floor and your heel is off the floor. You can even see the shadow right there. I'm not using plantar flexion to maintain this position. Every single muscle is at rest. So here's what the exercise will look like. I'm gonna engage my tibialis anteriors and I'm going to drive my heel down to the floor, as you see right there. It's a very small movement, very low range, but very effective. The key here is slow with holds. So notice I'm holding it down there and then I can release it back up. And then I'll do a second repetition, drive that heel down. And often what I'll say is once your heel is down to the ground, then try to push it further down, really engage that anterior tib. And a really nice thing you can do is you can, in this position, palpate the tibialis anterior while you're doing the exercise. And the benefit of that is you also get some tactile cues because you'll feel the anterior tib bulge out. And so it kind of helps with that neuroplasticity to take somebody who has some anterior tib weakness and get their brain to remember how to contract the muscle especially if you do it with that palpation. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.